Hello, my beautiful Earth Angels. Welcome to my channel. My name is Joanna. Welcome to Team Joanna. If you are coming back, thank you so much for coming back. I love having you here. And if you are new, um, thank you for stopping by. I hope you like what you hear and um, I hope you stay. And if you like what you hear, click the subscription button and the notification button. That really uh, helps me out. It helps to let people know that there is uh, content worthwhile listening to. So let me just turn down my music. Oh, it's a different um, different device. All right, so this, these are going to be messages for the month of May. Although, as we know, we can't quite put uh, energy in a box. We can't fit that in a box. We're trying to come out of boxes right now. Um, so it you will feel this um, May, and I would also say for the most part, if not, uh, mostly in June as well. It feels like uh, in June, around middle of June, somewhere there, uh, it feels like we're all getting back uh, to norm, which is interesting because I did um, the, the reading I did for um, air signs, there was an indication that by mid-May to end of May, there seems to be movement forward. So maybe for those of you who are of Earth sign, um, you're getting back to normal uh, or attempts to getting back to normal will um, transpire more from more in June uh, than in May, but that's you'll feel these energies for the month of May and or June. For some of you, you pr you may have been feeling what I'm about to talk about, but let me just uh, jump right in. So uh, to do what I always do is to state my intention, me, my, my, as, me as Joanna, uh, my aim, my intention is to essentially help you uh, know yourself better because when you do, the whole world opens up to you and things begin to take a uh, different shape, uh, often for the better. So that is my intention for you. Uh, whatever intention you have for listening to this kind of content, um, I hope that you get what you're looking for. All right, so uh, this is the second month where I'm doing combined um, signs for various elements. So I will go through the general message first, which will apply to all the signs in this uh, element. And then I have um, a few cards broken down by each sign. So for those of you who are kind, you can just put a um, uh, um, timestamp on the bottom, but the general message will also apply to you uh, if you are a specific sign. All right. So when I was tuning into um, our energy, because I am also an earth sign, predominantly earth sign, um, what was shown to me was idea of pruning. Now, what is pruning about? Pruning is essentially uh, getting rid of branches of a tree or a bush that are um, taking excess energy or taking, I should say, energy uh, but it's 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 no longer useful. So anything that has been outlived and it's kind of dry, the leaves are kind of dry, we prune those so that the energy goes to the good parts, the healthy parts, instead of being this scattered and redist or distributed into branches that are essentially dead. So pruning um, as a metaphor essentially talks about uh, getting rid of things that are energetically, well, no longer useful. But it has been happening for quite some time. Um, uh, the very uh, fact that we have been, um, what's this noise? That we have been, pardon me, if you hear a noise, I don't know where that's coming from. It's like something is vibrating. Huh, that's really interesting. Um, anyway, um, yes, ever since we had to become quarantined, we are looking at getting rid of aspects that are no longer useful. So uh, the month of May and a little bit of June seems to be devoted um, also to that. But that's not such a bad thing because when we prune, we essentially get uh, whatever it is that we are pruning ready for the next season so it can bloom and it can um uh, and it can um, rise or live to its potential. And uh, what I see when I say that is uh, us dropping excess baggage. But this is what ascension is, if we use that word. 
ascension essentially means us ascending or moving up and in order to move up we cannot have anything that weighs us down so uh the month of may and june is going to be um about pruning um what does it mean when i say to get rid of dead branches what does it mean in a in a in a physical world well it could mean for some of you anything that you have been uh, used to doing either a form of habit, uh, something that you've been doing out of obligation, um, or it, it's been too difficult to just kind of break the pattern. And if the pattern has been broken for you because of what we are experiencing in terms of uh, the virus, um, if you have broken a pattern of, for example, going to work every day from nine to five, and now you are quarantined at home and you realize, hmm, I can actually do this from home. And because of that, you're starting to have a whole bunch of different ideas. That would be, to me, um, an example of pruning. You are starting to think outside the box. And chances are, when you start to think outside the box, you start to look for things to reach out for or things appear to you that help you step out of the box. So we are essentially moving from being one way to shifting into being another way. Uh, in addition, the planet Uranus, and I'm not an astrologer, I will say that right off the bat, I'm not an astrologer, but I've heard enough about this that it basically stuck. The planets of Uranus in Taurus, which is going to be in Taurus for quite a few, for the next few years, um, is essentially about breaking old patterns and breaking, uh, uh, breaking, breaking old um, foundations. So we are in that process right now, and there couldn't be a better time for us to break any patterns that we deem are uh, not useful or limiting because the energy is very supportive of that. And also uh, to break a habit or a pattern, the easiest, uh, the surest way to break an old habit or a pattern is to develop a new habit or a pattern. So if you are thinking of uh, trying a new diet, trying a new workout program, trying a new hairdo, uh, putting um, something, uh, um, creating uh, something in your life that will benefit you in some way, shape or form, but you haven't done it before because you didn't have time or you had too many things on the go, whatever it is, uh, implementing new, especially healthy um, uh, belief systems and healthy, um, what do I want to say, healthy habits, uh, there is no better time and there probably will not be better time, not in our lifetime anyway. So the pruning idea combined with the timing being perfectly supported towards change are are, 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 are really good indicators that we are moving into, um, for most of us, something potentially far greater than what we come from. Now, from where, from where we see it now, it not, may not look that way. For some of you, it may feel like your life has gone to shits. Pardon my French. I could speak German, but it sounds the same. Um, so that's my little joke when I swear. Uh, for some of you, it may look like life has absolutely turned uh, upside down. You may have lost someone. And if you have, my heart goes out to you. You may have gotten sick yourself. You may have someone around you or some ones who are getting ill. So whatever I'm saying to you in terms of things getting better, you're probably thinking I have lost my mind and I should just go and, you know, take a hike. So absolutely, from this perspective, as you are looking at it, Absolutely, yes. And there is going to be nothing ever that will uh, be a good enough explanation if you have lost someone or if someone has lost their life because of it. We can be as uh, spiritual as we want. When it comes to things like death, it's very difficult to um, to, to, to make peace with that. It's, it, it just is. But from this perspective, if you are seeing it from this perspective, yes. But also remember that perspectives change and certainly time has the ability to change 
what we see and how we see things. So a year from now, even though you may be seeing shit all over the place, a year from now, you might be looking at this time and say to yourself, wow, I would never, ever want to go through that again, but holy crap, was it worth it? And um, as I say it, I'm going, uh, yeah, I could totally see that happening. And for some of you, you may have already seen glimpses of such. For some of you, you may not. And again, you might think that I've lost my mind, but uh, what I'm being shown is uh, a removed perspective where I can see what was, what is, and what potentially will be. And from what I can tell, we are moving into much more simplified lives. When I say simplify, I don't mean simple as in bad. When I say simplify, I mean less complicated, less chaotic, less an anxiety ridden, less all over the place. And those are all indicators of, um, those are all indicators of uh, peace. When we have less of headaches, less of an anxiety, less, less of uh, being over responsible for everything. When our life is less chaotic, then we naturally feel more peace. And this pruning or purifying is what will essentially allow that to happen. We are not there yet. Uh, many people aren't, and I would say most people aren't, but uh, many people, I would say majority of you who are listening, are using this time as a way to simplify your life, to have your life be less chaotic, not that you're going to ditch your responsibility, but perhaps you will look at your responsibilities differently. You will choose your responsibilities perhaps more wisely. Perhaps um, how you connect to your responsibilities will change and certainly how you go about uh, uh, how you go about your responsibilities may change. Um, some of you, quite a few number of you, will end up cutting some old cords. So what do I mean by cords? By cords, I mean old attachments that no longer serve you. Again, similar idea to pruning. So doesn't matter how I slice it or dice it, what I see here is a, f for most, I would say, a total restructure on how we live our world. Not because something in our world or our world, our physical world is going to be completely restructured, but because we, for the most part, will choose to restructure the way we see the world. And as a result, as we look at the world, the world will begin to see the, begin to look differently. And that's one of uh, uh, Wayne Dyer's, Wayne Dyer's um, um, uh, I'm saying, um, I've said it once, I didn't say it verbatim, but it's something like this. Uh, the moment you change what you're looking at, whatever you're looking at begins to change. It's something like that. It's not the exact verbiage. Um, so it looks like, again, the month of May and June seems to be uh, months of preparation. Now, I it felt that way to me in April, and I am recording this in late April. So it feels a little bit like a continuation. However, what I feel is that there is, I can like, I can feel that there is this light at the end of the tunnel. And whenever we're going through a tunnel and it's pretty dark and it's pretty tight and it's like, ah, oh, where am I going? And for those of you who are claustrophobic, being stuck in a tunnel is not uh, is not a pretty thing. And I'm using that as, that as a metaphor. Um, obviously, uh, hopefully you're not stuck in a tunnel but we are stuck at home. And for those of you who have um, uh, challenges with being claustrophobic, it may have brought up some anxieties, uh, but when things are brought up to the surface, there it's uh, things are easier to see. And when things are easier to see, sometimes we attempt to do something about it. About it. So part of the preparation is being aware of things we have not been aware before because we were busy. We were too um, too too bu busy. We didn't have time, which is the same thing. Uh, we had too many responsibilities. What, or we couldn't or we didn't want to or just we couldn't be bothered. Uh, 
what's happening right now is uh, we can resist change all we want, uh, change is happening. So that is what I feel uh, for the month of May and June. Um, the other thing I saw is uh, we are cracking open. What do I mean when I say cracking open? When something cracks open, and I'm going to uh, uh, say it in, in a context of a positive, something cracking open to expose something that's inside. For example, uh, a nut. When you crack the shell, which is the protection, you expose uh, the inner, which is uh, the inner fruit or whatever you want to call it, that has the nutrients, that is very uh, nurturing, that is, um, that is something that is uh, nurturing. That's, that's, what I, that's what I want to say. So us cracking open to me signifies we are becoming much more open in terms of who we really are beyond our restrictions, beyond our limitations, and beyond the thoughts that we think to ourselves or the stories we tell ourselves. So cracking open like an egg, I mean, if you like eating eggs or if you've tried an egg before, you probably didn't never wanted to eat it with a shell. So cracking a shell, cracking an egg open would be a, a good thing. So that's just an analogy. Um, all right, let's go with some of the cards. So I am still using the cards that have no names uh, or words associated with it. And I thought I'm gonna show you the box because quite a few have asked for it. So the ones that I'm using is called Soul Cards. Um, Deborah Koff Chapin is the name, as you can see here. Um, there is also Soul Cards 2. This is Soul Cards 1. So that's some of you who want to know. Uh, these are these. This is the deck. So for the month of May, what's the card that represents the energy? Notice what you feel. When I get this card, when I take this card into my hands, I hear the word illumination. A few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, in one of my uh, monthly, or sorry, weekly pulses, I talked about, twice in a row, I think, I talked about how we are getting a lot of information, downloads, information overload and uh, the need to decipher what is what is ours, what isn't, what's real, what's not real. It feels like it's a continuation of the same. We are getting lit up, so to speak. Um, there are several messages that I get in here. For some of you, your pineal gland is being activated, and as a result, your third eye chakra is opening. For some of you, um, you will experience seeing symbols, um, almost like lines, um, I almost want to say holographic views, holographic images. Um, uh, for some of you is with eyes open, for some of you when you close your eyes. Uh, this may also come up for some of you when you are dreaming. You might be receiving um, uh, literally, literally like pieces of a whole bunch of puzzle and you have no idea what these puzzle pieces are supposed to mean or where they fit. Uh, try not to work yourself up in figuring out how to fit all this information because I feel much of it will not make sense for you just yet. And I feel it's, so on one hand, we are cracking open and we are pruning. And on another hand, we're getting imprinted or in imprinted, I almost wanted to say the word implanted, but mm, I don't want to use that word. We're getting imprinted, imparted, thank you, with a lot of high frequency information. As a result, some of you, the highly sensitive ones, you will get some headaches, slight pressure headaches, the type of headaches that I'm talking about. It's like you feel it in your head, but it's also like you feel it in the stem of your skull. And I do feel if you have a headache, it's not really a headache, it's just a sensation that you can actually feel it in the stem of your of your skull. I feel that has a lot to do with the pineal gland opening or activating. So that's that's one message. Um, another message with this card is, uh, and I've mentioned the word Arct Arcturians, uh, Pleiadians as well. Uh, some of you are intentionally connecting with uh, the Pleiadians or other species, other galaxies. 
and you are uh, fine-tuning your communication skills. And as I'm saying this to you, I'm going, wait a minute, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a Taurus, I'm an earth sign too. So that, that is for me too, yes. I love when that happens. Sometimes when it happens, I question if I'm crazy. But I think I might have mentioned this before. Last year when I thought I was crazy, they said, consider crazy your normal. So if you think you're going crazy because you're getting a whole bunch of information that you do not understand or where it's coming from, uh, you're not crazy, but consider crazy your normal. Okay, so that's another message. Um, what I'm also drawn here is to throat here. Okay, and throat is obviously about communication. I feel some of you are still holding back with respect to what it is that you are being communicated with uh, or you are being imparted with. So if you are a channeler, if you are a healer, if you are a medium psychic or just a regular person, uh, which actually encompasses all of the above, um, you may have been getting a lot of information, a lot of imprinting, but your there is reluctance in, in pushing it out. There's reluctance in, in speaking about it. Um, I feel the reluctance with, will subside. Again, whatever it is that you are being imparted with, and for some of you, it's through dreams. Try not to figure out exactly what to do with it now because I feel it's part of your preparation program. It's like we are in class preparing uh, for whatever is after the graduation, uh, but I can't see what the graduation is. And of course, the graduation means something different for different people. Generally, when we graduate from school or college, we move on to the next step, which is uh, step up. So there is uh, another indication that we are absolutely, absolutely moving up. And for some of you, whatever information you receive, whatever information you are imparted with, it may not make sense for a while. OK, some of you may start seeing numbers and I don't mean, uh, you know, four, 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 two, two, two. Yes, I mean more like inside your mind, you start to see algorithms, algorithms. I don't even know what an algorithm is, but OK, some of you will see algorithms. I'm going to have to research what that word is. I've heard it before, but you see algorithms. Hmm. Now, if I saw algorithms, that would totally confuse me. I wouldn't know what to do with it. So sometimes it's it's better just to let it be for now let it be for now the next card that symbolizes the month of may and june is this card we've seen this before we've seen this before more than once quite a few times and if you look at those two cards they they are both representative of the mind so this is pardon me my my nails um the nail lady is closed <laughs> um Skull, mind, peaceful, same, mind, peaceful. And both of these depiction connect to uh, the aspect of the mind. In this card here, you it looks like you are tuning out the voices from the past. Now, I really like that sound. I love the sound of it. You are tuning you're tuning out the voices from the past. And it's not that they're not there, but you're just not giving them your attention. You're just basically saying, yeah, you do your thing and I'm just going to do my thing. Uh, what it also says to me that in order to have, how do I say this? To quiet your mind takes practice. To quiet your mind takes practice or to have a quiet mind takes practice. We need to practice quieting our mind. No time like the present. And yes, we love to say we don't have time, but for most people, you probably have plenty of time right now. And, um, okay, this is interesting. So one way of creating peace with your mind is to literally imagine 
your mind, your ego mind, as a separate part of you and objectify it as a separate part of you. So there is you and there is your ego voice. And imagine having a relationship with this part of you. Right now, you are in a relationship. If your mind is busy, right now you are in a relationship with a part of you that is basically uh, running the show. So you're not running the show. Your ego is running the show. Now, is that such a bad thing? No, not necessarily. But when ego runs the show, then oftentimes it runs it in a way that we don't necessarily appreciate. So how do we get our ego mind to be more under our control? But I'm going to say it different. How do we get into a relationship with our ego mind where it is mutually beneficial because ego is important. You are here to experience identity um, through recognizing yourself um, by in various ways. Uh, identity. You guys, you know what I'm trying to say. I think you know what I'm trying to say. So one way of effectively communicating your mind is to uh, uh, imagine having a relationship with a part of you a separate objectified part of you that is the ego mind and uh, just like you would have a relationship with somebody else where you would like to be listened to and the someone else would like to be listened to as well there is a there is a mutual respect um interesting metaphor and interesting exercise um i do it all the time in in, in various ways with clients but try that imagine uh, having a relationship with your ego self and, and literally imagine this as a separate part of you and um, learn to communicate with it better. Learn to communicate with it, not better, I'm going to use a different word, more effectively. Because right now, for many of us, your ego self is running the show, like I've mentioned it before. And when that happens, this is often what happens, okay? So um, learning how to tune out those voices is very important. It's not necessarily ignoring it, but it's not giving it too much attention, which I guess if I slice it or dice it, it, it I guess it's sort of the same thing, but um, maybe it is the same thing. So you're not, you're not really ignoring it, but you're not giving it too much attention. Yeah, make a comment if that makes sense to you, because that's, that's what I'm getting here. So those are the two cards that symbolize um, April and uh, sorry May and June. Very interesting. Uh, the next card, also very interesting, is this card. To me, this card represents yin and yang. There is something about <clears throat> independence with this card. Uh, you see two individuals, the feminine and the masculine both facing different directions, but their backs are touching and their hands are holding. So they're, they're connected, but they're, but they're dependent, independent at the same time. Because it showed up to me this way, and I don't always look at these cards in reverse, but sometimes I do. Um, what this is telling me is that if there's been any imbalances, um, particularly not owning up to the fact that many of you are leaders for whatever reason because you're scared because you don't believe you are because you don't think that you have what it takes because you've been hurt before whatever it may be and uh, those thoughts are as a result of imbalanced emotions imbalanced thoughts imbalanced emotions so this card of illumination here I feel is going to help us with any kind of imbalances that we have been dealing with for quite some time. Uh, it's interesting because for some of you, uh, the idea of being stubborn comes up. This is a elk is a card of a leader. By the way, it's an earth sign. Um, I believe, yes, it's an earth sign. And um, you see his horns are on fire. So there is a talk here about stubbornness. Now, stubbornness is not necessarily a bad quality. Nothing is good or bad. 
as far as I'm concerned. We put these labels on things because that's what we do, but nothing is inherently good or bad. It's, um, it's, just, the, it's just how we connect to it. So um, stubbornness is not bad unless it's excessive and unless it's um, you know, not serving you or the greater good. But stubbornness can be good. Sometimes stubbornness gets us uh, out of trouble or it gets us into places. And sometimes stubbornness helps us not to be lazy or deal with laziness. Um, but as far as the imbalance, um, because it showed up in a reverse position, again, any imbalances that have been standing in your way of coming into your own leadership, into your own authority, because I see this as an authority figure, doesn't mean that you have to work uh, you have that you that you have to have a, a title of an authority. It's talking about authority being your own authority in your life. Any discrep any imbalances that have stood in a way of you becoming your own authority in your life, I feel over the next two to three months, uh, we will be. Um, moving on from, the, from those or transforming those almost like pulling weeds out of our garden. So that is a, that's a beautiful, beautiful message. Uh, what are we leaving behind? The card of openness, which is card 18, but it landed in this position in reverse. Um, when I saw this, the word resistance came to me. So we are leaving resistance behind. And I, for one, am saying yes, because I have been experiencing quite a bit of resistance and I haven't been shy talking about it. So if you're one of those people who has been, who have been, has been, have been, experiencing a lot of resistance, we are moving past it. Majority of us are moving past it over the next uh, little while. Now look where we're going. New beginnings. There is a lot of red in this card, which to me speaks comfort, physical comfort, stability, financial comfort, beginning, new beginning, brand new beginning. Well, it's a brand new cycle. Let's call it a brand new cycle, a uh, brand new journey. Um, it's not even the fool, it's the magician to me. So this is where we are going. Many of us are moving towards a brand new beginning. But again, all you have to do is just turn on the news and realize that there are some old, there are some things we're leaving behind. Um, now I'm being drawn to the shell here. And I know it's symbolic and I, um, my brain is trying to search through the meanings of symbology of a shell, but I'm not gonna do that because I actually don't know what it is. I am going to tune into it. You know what I got with the shell? I got, it. listen to your inner voice. When I was young, um, whenever I found a shell like this or it was given to me, I would always put it in my, into my ear and I would listen. It's like, it's like I was listening for something. It's, it's like when I put it into my ear, like there was a whole other world in the shell. So what I get from this here is, listen to your inner guidance. Now, we are living in chaotic times, uh, obviously, and um, some of you may be questioning what reality you live in. I know I have. And um, that may make us feel somewhat disconnected, unprepared, um, unsure, absolutely unsure, not quite uh, feeling safe or secure. And um, during those, time, those time, listening to the inner voice is uh, can be more challenging because a lot of fears come up. A lot of fears come up, right? But look what's happening with all those fears. We are turning a blind eye, or we are we are not paying as much attention. Um, so even though we're going through a lot of difficulties and times of change, I feel many of us are actually benefiting from it in, 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 in terms of 
uh, tuning into and getting good at listening to our intuition. So that's a huge, 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 huge sign. This new beginning, however, has some of us feeling a little bit, I want to say the word anticip 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 anticipatory anticipatory there's a there's a there's a sense of anticipation um makes perfect sense to me because many of us don't know where we're going life has all of a sudden changed turned upside down for many people and we're not quite sure where this is going because we're not out of the we're not out of the um out of the tunnel yet but there is a light at the end of the tunnel so you might be feeling a little bit nervous. You might be feeling a little bit restless. You might be feeling like you can't quite know what to do with yourself because of these potential new beginnings. But um, that's just passing energy. That's passing energy. So I'm gonna go through each sign. For sign of Taurus, what came up for a sign of Taurus? What is it that you, what messages do I have for the sign of Taurus? You're gonna like this. 10 of coins, boom. Ten of coins and the card of faith in reverse so what i get here is many of you taurians are moving into much more financially rewarding place in your life um does that mean every single person is going to be more financially off or better financially off than before all this happened? Maybe, maybe not, uh, but there's a pretty good indication that if it's not money, then it's you in terms of your own value and how you feel about yourself in terms of value. Um, it's, it's, if you were, if you were a, a real estate, you would be worth a lot. And some of us are coming from feeling this, which is total insecurity. So if going through these difficult changes means you move from a space of inner insecurity to a place of empowered, of empowerment and inner security, then I, for one, would say it was well worth it. Of course, if you've lost someone, nothing is worth that, I don't think. It would be pretty difficult to, to, to make peace with that and say that was worth it. But for those of us who have not, thankfully, lost someone to this uh, virus, uh, whatever tunnel you're going through, um, it will have been worth it. Um, this faith card in reverse basically says that um, you still might feel a little bit wobbly over the next month and month and a month to month and a half. So particularly around beginning to middle of June, you may have a moment where you're kind of wavering. You're not sure how you feel about things. But again, this is very, this is temporary. This is uh, even though it's a major arcana card, this is temporary. This is a, a good time actually to go deep inside and... Um, and um, you know, have a conversation with your ego self and ask, uh, why am I feeling, why am I feeling like I don't trust? Why am I feeling a little bit wobbly? And see, and see what you get in your meditation. So this is for Taurus, for the sign of Virgo. Very interesting because we have the Three of Swords and the Two of Pentacles. So something that is felt as a disappointment ultimately affords you a new opportunity now these this feels financially um connected so for most of you this is going to be around job or uh in particular responsibilities uh physical you know uh earth type energy uh but it feels like it's coming out of um out of disappointment and um with what's going on, there's been, I'm sure, a lot of disappointments that people feel, but these, uh, these disappointing circumstances will afford for many of you uh, other opportunities and other choices. And notice I'm saying the word afford. It's a very money, financially uh, connected word, afford, afford. So 
uh, if you've been um, having difficulty or not difficulty, if you've, what do I want to say here with the word afford? You can't afford not to take this chance. For some of you, there is a chance that's going to be presented and it has a financial uh, financial uh, uh, connection to it. Um, you cannot afford not to take this opportunity or not at least to look at this opportunity. For some of you, this may come as a surprise, but again, it's still somehow connected to a situation that uh, at first, may uh, may have disappointed you. Perhaps some of you during this virus stay at home uh, quarantine times meant um, your company is no longer in business or your company decided to completely restructure and as a result you lost your job. Never a great situation but if it presents to you a new opportunity as a result then that ultimately is a really good thing. Okay, so that's what I have for you, Virgos. Uh, it's actually really, really good. Capricorns. The Nine of Cups in reverse and the Hermit in reverse. Both nines. Um, I feel like for you, Capricorns, it feels like you're at the brink, brink of some kind of revolutionary change in your life but I can't quite grasp it. You're not quite there. So look up the meaning of number nine. To me, nine is about letting go. There is some resistance for some of you with letting go of an attachment or certain attachments. And it has to do with your emotions. It's, with your, it's concerned with your emotions. And um, let me just tune in here. For some of you, whatever is draining your energy the most, whatever has you scratching your head and going, how did I end up here? I have a feeling it's not gonna be too long before whatever that is leaves your life. And the way I see it, it's almost like you don't really have to do anything about it. It has legs of its own. It kind of leaves you whether it's a situation or a person, a set of circumstances which are similar to situation. Um, I just feel like you're on the brink of a new adventure, but in order to kind of get there, you have to let go of whatever is draining your energy. Could be a habit that you are um, partaking in and habit always serves some kind of an emotional need. Uh, but whatever it is, it's like you're you're moving away from it. The hermit in reverse, uh, what I get from that is you might feel, you might be prone to isolation. And I don't necessarily see it as a bad thing. Um, but for those of you in particular who rely on vices, to deal with your emotions. So this could be addictions. Um, you might find yourself wanting to isolate yourself over the next two to three months. It's just, it's, it's just, I feel how you want to, how you will want to deal with things. It's like, I just want to put myself in a box and close the door and nobody come in until all of this blows off. So blows over. So some of you may feel like you want to extricate yourself literally from humanity and just you just want to close yourself off and throw away the key. Um, I, I, if that happens, resist the urge to make it a thing. Make every effort possible to do things that are social even if it's just interacting over the screen. Uh, I'm gonna say it differently. Make sure you're not always alone because sometimes always being alone feeds, where is it, where's the card here? Oh, where is the card? Feeds these voices, okay? Now on the other hand, 
if you use this card this energy as a way of tuning out these voices then by all means knock yourself out that's actually wonderful okay so that is what i get um for all of you guys and um last but not least we have the empress it's all about growth it's all about expansion it's all about brand new beginnings here's a baby here so for some of you it'll be a physical baby for most of you this is a newness something new something new coming to life and uh august comes up for some of you this newness this new beginning is going to make sense to you in the month of august so uh, July, August, somewhere there. And um, that's all I have for you. So if you like what you hear, again, press the subscribe button and um, do comment down below. I, I um, You like this um, format? I only think received one. One person said that they like to go to the back to the old um, and I thought about it for a minute, but I thought, I can't, it's no longer me. I can't go back to the 12 zodiac signs. It's as much as I would like to give people what they want. Uh, it's not who I am anymore. So do going back would basically mean I, I, I don't honor what I feel is right for me. So I'm going to have to continue. And um, it's part of evolution. Just things change and we adapt. Um, so do listen to your other signs as well, because you probably have houses in different um, elements, not just in Earth. But please comment uh, what makes sense to you. And if you would like a private session with me, particularly the healing session, I have been devoting a lot more time to healing right now. Like it's it's a total switch because it does help with these energies. And I have been told that the, the healing work uh, acts a lot like uh, a battery charger. You know when the battery is dead and somebody comes in with the cables and jumpstart the battery? That's apparently what the healing work does. It jumpstarts um, your energy so that... Psh, uh, you know, things can move forward or things can, um, yeah, things can move forward. Things can push forward a little bit. So if you would like that, that information is down below. And um, aside from that, I wish you wonderful month of May. And I'll see you obviously in weekly pulses. And um, I look forward to seeing you soon. Take care. Bye-bye.